very much. Okay. Let's, let us, though, begin with the prayer for our study. Lord God, we ask you to be with us now. Let your Holy Spirit guide and direct and open our hearts and minds to your word. Help us once again, Lord, to pick apart these uh, passages that John gives us, that we would not just understand them, but we would live them in our daily life, especially about this aspect of love, how, how to love others, Lord, as you have loved us. Bless us with your presence now. Be my guide as we lead, as I lead this group. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. We are on page 51. We're down at the bottom of the page. Second John. And again, in Second John, there are no chapters, so it's just verses there. <clears throat> Starting out with a paragraph, it says, John's reading at the beginning of the letter ends with the phrase, in truth and love. And we've talked a lot about that. Second John, verse 3. These words, truth and love, introduce the two major themes of 2 John. The first half of the letter deals with God's command to love, while the second half deals with the necessity to confess the truth that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. These two aspects, truth and love, are, are really critical, really critical to our being, to our, our profession as Christians, and all that we are by God's desire. Going to 2 John now. I want to read verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> Second John, beginning at the first verse. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and love. Walking in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I was, were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you heard it from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. What are some phrases or some things in there that catch your attention before we go into the actual study? What are some? The elect lady. What was that? The elect lady. Okay. And her children. Yeah. Okay. Elected. Now, this is love. The elder to the elect lady. The elder to the elder to the lady. Yeah, Mr. Wanna know the lady. So you were saying this is love? I don't know. Who's, 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 who's the elder lady? to the elect lady? We just who's want the to know lady? Who's, who's the chosen lady? Yeah. <laughs> It's a common title for the spiritual leaders of Christian congregations. That's the elder, right? Yes. But who's the elect lady? Who's the, the church. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, really? oh. Now, now we know the rest of the story. <laughs> the the church. Oh, and I have that written right down here. The church. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have it written right there, and I didn't look at it. Oh, <laughs> the chosen lady and her children, the congregation, the congregation, we, we the people, yeah, mm -hmm. the people, wow. all the other, everyone, everyone, yeah, all everyone in the church. Okay, uh, that was a greeting that John had from that standpoint, mm -hmm. <laughs> writing this to the congregation, in, in other words, and he's writing to the congregation about truth and love. Truth and love. 
This was one of the difficulties and always has been in a congregation, truth and love. Okay. You're very fortunate if you haven't had had the negative experience of having that, but many congregations do not have truth and love as they deal with one another. And I'm not talking about a pastor type of a relationship. I'm talking about relationships with each other, truth and love. Okay. It's, it's so interesting. You see, we say we are Christians, but then when it comes to doing the work of the Lord, we don't act like Christians. Some of the things that you know can go on and some of the things that are said in congregations and congregational meetings that are extremely hurtful. I remember one church I was in before I was a pastor, a member of the church, one of the members got up and told the pastor straight out in front of the congregation, you know, pastor, you always pick your friends. And I happen not to be one of them, man. You see, it took him totally by surprise. It took all of us by surprise. But how that comes out, how that, yeah. Well, I think he thought about that power of the, not, of the felt insecure maybe in his whole all of his life he's insecure for one thing he doesn't feel like people really really care for him no matter what well but he was recognized i know others. but there's a difference yeah sure and, and you're right you're right there there's something was going on there but is that how you treat no. In the open, is that how no. we're, we're to? No. You know, because we're we're told scripturally that if you have a problem with a, a person, you go to them directly first, talk to them one on one, and then if that doesn't work, then there's another process. You see, all of that was thrown out the window, <laughs> and that's how quick it can happen. How many times have we seen in the congregation members leave because something happened that they didn't like? Okay. It's those types of things, you see. Rather than talking about it, rather than sharing what's going on and trying to find a resolution to it, it's either, I'm out of here. So many times, uh, you know, there's congregational splits, congregations difficulty. <clears throat> Don't put on the sword and shield as you go out that God gives us. That can happen a lot. Mm -hmm. We had at one church, we just called a, a, a pastor uh, to come to the church to, to be the pastor. And uh, I had called him several days later and I told him I wanted to talk to him about a few things and making arrangements and whatever. He says, well, I can't really talk right now. He says, everything is on fire here. Mm. That was his words. Okay. Now, you know, can, it's only by imagination we can understand what he might have meant. But everything is on fire. I'm putting out fires all the time. I don't have time for anything else. How can that be in a Christian congregation? Because we're sinners. Because we aren't that perfect. Because John writes about that and says, I know what's going on. I know what you're going to deal with. Please deal with truth and love. So that's that's his message before us at this time of all. Okay. Pastor? Yes. Pastor, I want to say that I'm going to call this my new church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find Christian love everywhere. 
I don't know about what the meetings or anything are like, but I find mm -hmm. Christian love sure. everywhere. Yeah. And it is. It, don't get me wrong. It's it's most it's mostly there. Yes. It is mostly there. Yes, but, I see. And I feel that. Yeah. It it definitely it's, it's is. So and, it's and, and, and that is a good feeling. And that is that is the desire and the hope. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take sometimes much for something to get disturbed and cause the uproar. And it does happen. You know, we you 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 if you've been in a church any length of time, the splits that come in churches. Okay. St. Paul here years ago, over here on Ballinger, they had a huge split. Okay. Things of that nature. These things happen. Uh, but should they happen? And and if it's dealt with according to God's word, is this what God wants? from that standpoint. What will it take to bring that about? Truth and love, John says. Going down to the bottom of page 51 now. We just read John, second John verses one to six. It says, as he does in first John, so here John reminds his readers that the commandment to love is not new. They have had it from the beginning. He does not, however, give precise information about how the original recipients of his letter were falling short of his command. From what you remember of 1 John, sketch how John's readers were failing to love. And so we want to go back to a few things and see what causes this type of activity, this lack of love within God's churches. Let's go back to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Verses 15 to 17. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, and the desires of the eyes and prides and possessions, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So what is the one of the warnings that John gives within the church? Desires of the flesh, possessions, things like that, yeah. are not going to help your love, help you to love okay. others. What's the, what's the word that the word that was repeated over and over again? What? Love, I guess. World. world, world, okay, the world, he, he keeps bringing up, do not love the world, okay, and, and then he describes, if you caught it in there, he describes, if anyone loves the world, then the love of Father is not in him, for the world, verse 16, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride and possession. Three things. Okay. Pride of possessions. Desires of the flesh. And our own desires. What we see. I want it my way. Those are the things that are going to bust apart. In any basic relationship, in fact. Okay. Okay. It, it breaks down that aspect of love. How can there be love when all of these other desires are there before the relationship between? So there's the warning against loving the world instead of God's word and God's commands. Going to the next group. First John chapter three now, the 
just a page two uh, away from that, verse 16 to 18. First John chapter three, verse 16 to 18. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. So what is his warning here? Well, when you close your heart against someone that really needs something, you close your heart. You don't want to deal with it. That's that's the warning. Yeah. That's exactly the warning. That when we see somebody in need and we don't want to help. Yeah, so that's the warning. Let me just have it. Actions speak stronger than words. Yes. What do you know? Actions. Oh, Actions yeah. speak louder if, than words. If you walk by that does or you don't even kind of a sorriness for that person you see out in the cold. I can tell you how many times I'll see somebody walking from Kroger and it's cold. And, but in today's world to stop and offer a ride is dangerous. dangerous yeah. But my heart thinks, man, here I am in a warm car. I don't have much, but I have a warm car. Yeah. But but you don't dare say, hey, hop in, let me take you back for the locks. The world used to be more like that. We weren't up so afraid of our brother. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't stop either because, but I, I would have a long time ago. Right. And I'm sorry to say that I don't know what else to do. Well, one time I always pray when I see someone like that in need. Yeah, I do yeah, too. You know, and I say, I, I, you know, if the cars broke down and they're out there trying to, you know, whatever, I say, I, I, I just pray that and those, you know, those help and that, uh, you know, your day would be brighter. But, but talk about trusting back when my aunt and uncle lived on Hill Road, but it was dirt. Okay. Okay. And Anyways, we were on a way to take my cousin to his baseball game and broke down. The farmer broke down. What can I do for him? She says, well, I, my main concern is getting David there on time. Will you take the two of them to the ball field? Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> You think about that these days, She's you can give your kids to the stranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could do that. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. Yeah. You expected them to be kind, to be good. Now, you expect the opposite. I mean, and, 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 and that certainly we have to take in consideration. That we have to take in consideration from that standpoint and not put ourselves at jeopardy for the sake of something we don't know. And, and that, but it causes, it, it causes us to be discerning and to give it, and if nothing else, we can always pray. Yeah. You see, we can always pray and God has said he will answer prayers. And maybe somebody else would come along or or, or maybe that's not the whole story. Maybe some people just don't like to wear coats. And there are some around that don't like to wear coats, no matter how cold it is, because, you know, I can handle it. Well, um, you can, if you really feel like it, call 911 and tell them about the situation. If you find somebody that looks bad off, I mean, rather than let him in, just say, it. I'm going to call 911 for you. That's one recourse. <clears throat> and, and I think in particular, I, I will tell you this, that basically when John writes this particular passages, he's talking to about 
the church, how to treat brothers and sisters in the church. Okay. Those are the ones we know about. Those are the ones we should be able to trust that we that would do it. And that's that's where he's really leading us. But in the bigger picture, God also says we're all. And and who is our brother? Who is our sister? Who is our neighbor? So that but in this context, he, he is basically speaking to the church. Oh, he started out that chapter in to the church. So, so in, in the church setting, when we see somebody is hurting, when they see something, somebody doing without our brother or sister, we're called upon to try to help. And again, there's only sometimes so much help we can do. Each one of us, we, we, there's a limit, of, of course, but. Uh, when we don't even try or when we turn our backs, that's John saying, no, that is not the Christian thing. That is not loving God because he doesn't love you that way. God doesn't say, well, I'd help you, but you know, you were a stinker yesterday. <laughs> and I just think I, you've got to just get through the day yourself. So good luck. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. Let's go on to chapter 4, 1 John. Verses 19 to 21. Chapter 4, 19 to 21. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he can, has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So again, John puts this aspect of love high on the list. And, and he warns against hating our brother warns against hating that and again <laughs> and direct to the church the body of christ and not just the specific church of this church or that church but uh, all of the churches you know sorry to say but i i think pastor mark knows about it I certainly have seen it that within the Missouri Synod, there have been some very difficult, hateful types of things that have developed uh, and words being said and produced and, and put out in public against one another. And when you go to the Synod convention, it's not necessarily a loving convention. I'll be very truthful about it. It's really a painful situation. When I, I only went once, I, I said I would never go again because of some of the things that just come out. And you wonder, where does this come from and how can they say that? And, and you know, it, it's just not dealing in love. It's not, and it doesn't mean that you're just going to go with the flow and everybody is lovey-dovey. There are, there are discrepancies. There are things that need to be talked about. But can we talk about them civilly without tossing out names and saying, well, if you vote for this, this tells me who you are, really. And it's like, you know, you're judging me on how I vote. You're, you're threatening me. <laughs> it's the politics. Yeah. Since, yeah. since yeah. when does oh, you know? When does a, a brother in Christ threaten oh, another? Political. So, so it, it's it's so interesting that you know here John, hundreds of years ago, knows what's happening in the churches, and it still happens today. Yeah. It still happens today. And so it is well for us to take the warning 
And as Ellie says, to enjoy the fellowship, the love and the care that is found in the congregation. So important and thank God for that. Let's go back uh, to uh, 2 John. I'm gonna read verses seven to 13 now. Second John, verse seven. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Now John's very specific. Those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Who is Jesus Christ? He's God. Okay. So what he's talking about, how can God come in the flesh? Right? They're rejecting. They're rejecting that thought completely. They're rejecting that thought yeah, that God mission. could come in the flesh. Jesus come into the So flesh. Jesus Christ. This Jesus that's walking the face of the earth at this time couldn't be. There were so many out there that believe he can't be God if he's walking the face of the earth. Because if you remember in the first chapter, we talked about the, the Gnostics, that group of people that had their basic thinking is everything that's of the earth is evil. So if Jesus is walking on the face of the earth and as a human with body and mind, and eyes and ears, he must be evil. He can't be God. You see the, I want to say philosophy, but the approach that is taken to that, and how that was turned around. And that's why there was a whole group. People said, you can't tell me that God is Jesus Christ. He can't be the Messiah because everything on earth is evil. That's what we believe. You know, that's not what is taught. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Old Testament said. But that's what they put in their minds. Trying to reduce um, God to how we think. And he doesn't think. His ways are not our ways. I mean, we can't humanly think. Right. I mean, can think beyond, that God does. It's beyond the reason of, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if it doesn't fit common sense or reasoning, then we're going to throw it out. Throw it out from that standpoint. Going back to verse seven very quickly, for many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, such a, such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for and may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. Whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greet you. So here John identifies this. Again, what he is saying uh, very simply in these la this last verse, he says, oh, I have much to write you with. I would rather do what? Face to face. face. Face to face. You tell me, is it easier to deal with that one you dislike by writing a letter oh, yeah. or yeah. doing it face to face? Face to face is much face harder. To face. face to face. But what brings the best result? Face to face. Face to face. You see? 
face to face brings the best result. Just from reading this, it just it makes me think about Jehovah Witnesses and and um, the Mormons because they don't believe Christ is God. Right. So, so how do they justify their thinking when they read something like that? Well, like the Jews. Well, no, the Jews don't believe Christ is God either, but I'm just saying they don't claim to be a Christian church where Jehovah yes. Witnesses and, and Mormons do. That's right. Yes, right. That's because they believe in Jesus as just a man, yeah. just, but not the Son of God, not the Son of God. And, and that's the warning that John gives us as well in this chapter and all from that standpoint. Going back to number 116 on page 52, John states that the deceiver refuses to confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Do you think John singled about this doctrine as key? May we review this discussion based on lesson one. And I basically answer that with Gnosticism, that particular community of believers. <clears throat> had that false teaching <laughs> material world was evil. So anything born, anything of the flesh was evil. So that's just the way it was to them. And if Jesus was in the human flesh and was said to be God, then he would be evil. Common sense, right? That's not what works. From that standpoint. Number 117. John says that the consequence of this erroneous belief is that such a person does not have God. John does not explicitly discuss love at this point, but why do you think it would be difficult to love without faith in the incarnation? Be difficult to love without faith in the incarnation. Incarnation meaning God sent his son Jesus to come to earth to save us. If we didn't have that, why, how would we know what real love is? Who, who in their right mind would send your son to die? Some people have to with the, with the warfare. I mean, I'm not in favor of that, but how does he reconcile that? You don't. There's no way to reconcile that if somebody is doing that. Well, they always have. There's always been war. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's not, war is not that, though. War is completely different from that, by the way, in that case. Yes, you know, when a person goes to war, they know that they could very well die, as far as that goes. But that's for a purpose and a cause that's greater on that basis. But that's not a... When we speak of love, when the Bible speaks of love, when we speak of love, we must always go back to we love because Jesus loved us first. It is not our love that Jesus loved us. It's that we love because he loved us first. Going on to three John, the next book of the Bible. This short letter deals with support and opposition within the congregation to which John is writing. Okay, so, so here again, we see that John has found some opposition, difficulties on it. He's, he's writing this letter. He says, it says, the letter is addressed to an individual named Gaius, who welcomed a group of Christian missionaries. 
John cites this as evidence of Gaius's love. On the other hand, a man named Diotrephus refused to welcome the brothers. Others refused that. So let's go to 3 John, starting at verse 1. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. these words, there's presidents here of missionaries, see, in the New Testament, missionaries already going out. And those missionaries went out to depend on the goodwill of the congregation, that they would receive them as such. I don't think he had any if you sin, what they think is a sin, it, he doesn't have any mercy. It's death. Who, who didn't have any mercy? Uh, the one that, not gain, is he was the one that believed right. in God. Oh, yes, right. The other one, mm -hmm. yes. That is correct. He is, that is so correct. that will be it, and that's it. That, that was it. That, that's, and, and that's, that's the human nature. That's the sin that's there. And that can come into the church. That can come into the church and do it. Many times, uh, in what seemingly is a very good thing, I've been in churches where financially churches have been caught in a in a difficult part, but not enough finances. And members, of, some members of the church will say, "Well, mission starts at home." We take care of ourselves first before we do others. <sighs> I don't know how it strikes you, but it doesn't strike me as that would be something that God would say or has said. He says, I will always take care of you. You will never want, no matter how much you give. You give and you'll find more in your lap. And yet there are those who say, no, we can't give to anyone else. We can't give to anyone else. We have to pay our own bills first. Ooh, a lot of people think that. No. I, first church that I was called to, I was called to the church. They didn't really have a church. They were worshiping in a high level house that was turned into a worship place, which is fine. On the bulletin board was a half dozen bills that hadn't been paid and asking members to please pick one up if you could pay it. They were in debt. And I says, what are your missions like? Oh, pastor, we can't do any missions. As you can see, we don't have any money. He says, you don't do any mission? No. no. I said, okay. Needless to say, I'm not, my first days on the job, you don't want to ruffle feathers too much. So you just kind of listen and get an idea of where they're standing, what they're thinking and all. And so in the church service, in the prayer time, uh, 
know, offered up prayers that God would be able to take care of us and that our giving would be better, things of that so encouragement in terms of that. After about five months there, at one of the business meetings, the treasurer says, well, we have $9,000 in our treasury. Isn't that wonderful? Everybody said, yeah. And then went on to the next thing. And I said, wait a minute. Time out. I says, what are you going to do with that $9,000? Oh, we're not going to touch that. If we didn't have any money coming in, it would only pay for the next two months of bills. Like, see where they're thinking, you see? How many more months of bills do you need to pay for if no, no money came in? And if no money came in, do you think you would really have a church? <laughs> if no money came in for two months? So I, I, I challenged them. I says, well, I says, if you don't find a way to use this money, I believe God will find a way to use it and you won't have any control over it. Well, that caught their attention. Finally caught their attention. Well, maybe a little bit. So, well, what would you want to do with that? What do you want to do? Well, Pastor, we need a new church. We need a church. Okay, fine. Then, Let's put it to the building of a new church. And in three years, they had a new church mm. built, brand new facility. No debt, no difficulties. But where did the money come from? But where did it come from? It's from prayer. That's right. Mm -hmm. God said he would take care of. God said, you take care of the needs of others, that. And they added mission work to it, and they added other things to it, so it wasn't just them, but they did all of that. And God blessed them, as he will bless you and me and anyone else, as we give. Instead of looking at our wallet and say, well, I can't afford this this week, maybe next week. He'll find out, he'll, he will do it. He will do it. And it'll be in various ways. So um, that very thing can be applied to uh, when I uh, start. He, uh, I was part of a group, which you probably know, that was called the Mustard Seeds. We were a contemporary group that wrote our own music. Of course, we, we covered some others, but uh, there were six of us. And we started out with a guitar and one amplifier and uh, and a prick. You know, this this is what we wanted to do. Our first songs were, were uh, acapellas, so we didn't need a whole lot. And uh, we prayed so we could get our message out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were invited to Concordia to serve. Again, there we were with this, <laughs> but we did mainly acapella music. And then we started getting, you know, we prayed and said, well, we need some better equipment. Well, you know, and we only asked for uh, a free will offering when we went somewhere. And uh, boy, before you know it, we were getting we were getting calls to come out, and uh, but I always told the group anytime we had money in a checkbook, I'd say, "Hey, we got to get rid of this money, and we got to put it into work." And, you know, of course, we all agreed. 
So that, that made it great because mm -hmm. everybody was approved. Yeah, right. But sure. yeah, we had a wonderful and that, time. That's right. And that's Fifteen years. We, we had a wonderful time doing what we did. And, and uh, I think that was the, our number one person that we were. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to get. I, and I always, in anything that I that I did, that had a checkbook, I was always trying to spend it. <laughs> you know, let's get it in the mission field. Let's give it to the airplane people in Alaska. Let's, but, uh, well, that's nice when, when you can do that. And if everybody agrees to it, it's just a wonderful ride. It's, it's a wonderful place to be. Church. And, and you've had missionaries here and uh, you supported them and though that's the type of a thing that you know God blesses with countless other blessings that come forth not only just for the missionary but for <laughs> givers as well from that standpoint that's the way our God works it's not the way the human mind works. It's not the way people think the world thinks, but it's the way God works. God is good. God is good. It's exactly right. Uh, Pastor? Yes. It's natural to think of self. And one could have faith, but it's going to take a leap of faith to move forward. But I didn't catch that last part. It would take you need to have you may have faith, but you yeah. need to take a leap of good faith leap. in order to do sure. what you might not think is going to help you. And, and there's that aspect of putting faith into action. Yes, that's mm -hmm. a faith. having the thought is good. Yes, but putting it into action is what you is have there. the trust and the leap of faith. Yes, I'm going to do it. Do it. Do it on. Do it with the knowledge that God will bless this in some way, somehow. It's not that we do it because he will. It has to come from the heart. It's, it comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. And that's, again, the big fight that we have within the world because everything else is taught, you know, well, it's, uh, we either get it because we have this and have that. And, and I... I <laughs> had a lovely uh, get together with my kids this week and <coughs> they were talking about giving and I thank God that they're involved in church work and all of that and, uh, they keep bringing up the fact that how how did Sharon and I raise five kids and we had swimming pools and vacations and cars and everything for them on and they know how much or how little I made when I was in the retail business how do you do that Ben I says I don't know how but I says I can tell you he did it he provided God provided and he's he says it's, there's no way we could even we can't even imagine you being able to do that. You and mom do all the things you did. We never had any want, they said, you know, we had all shoes, we had clothes, we had everything. I says, I know. It. I says, I know. It. But the interesting part is, uh, I'll tell you the personal part, is that when it came to that time, I always gave something to the church, but I never tied. And this was, of course, before I was in the ministry and well before that. One day we came home from church, Sharon and I, and Sharon says to me, she says, Dad, she, Dave, we have to tithe. I says, we can't. She says, we have to tithe. I says, we can't. Let's take care of the bills. I says, I know how many of the bills are. I says, for the last three years, our credit card has been higher every year more indebtedness. And I'm making more money every year, but it, indebtedness, indebtedness is more. She says, we can't. She said, we have to. Uh, let her listen. 
Holy Spirit apparently got my attention. And I said, well, we'll try it for a year. My exact words. So we did it. Changed the giving. Put in the check. The year end came. And put the figures together. First time in 10 years of married life, the indebtedness was the down. And I, and I told Sharon, I says, well, I guess you're right. The indebtedness is down. And we made it all. I says, but just think, if we hadn't paid the church all of that, we would have even paid more of it. <laughs> really did. I mean, I was talking about being far out, disconnected. My, my reasoning, my idea of what's sensible just was in there all the way, and Satan was taking hold of it. And no, it wasn't going to be that case because I... I wised up to the, the real fact of it all and know that you give God and, and he'll take care of the rest. And how he does that is unexplainable, explainable, and just grace and mercy, grace and mercy, love for God. Pastor, that was a faith of a good woman. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was a faith of a good woman who understand it better than I did. Yeah. Who understood it better than I did. You know, we always faithfully gave, but never died until that year. Yeah. Something led her. Yep. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> and I thank God for that. Yes. Yeah, that was a special gift from that standpoint. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for your sharing on that too. Going down to, I know we, we're not going to take a look at Matthew and Corinthians and Thessalonians. There's, those are passages that tell us that missionaries did count on the people and where they stayed and all of that. Uh, as missionaries, they, they went out by faith and trusted that the Lord would provide for them. And that's what the Lord did from that standpoint. Number 119, given the example of Paul in the last two passages, it may be that traveling missionaries did not always feel comfortable asking for support. How does offering such support, even when it is not asked for, benefit not only the recipient, but the giver as well? When we support a missionary, how does that not only affect the missionary, but us as givers? Better to give than to receive. It solves a problem if they need money as a missionary to take care of their needs. So they're grateful without having to beg. I mean, no one wants to beg for stuff. Sure. Most how, how about the fact that as they go out, you become part of their mission? For you, okay, they're doing your work in a way. You support them. You're allowing them to go, and so you, not in a personal way so much, but by finance or by caring for them or providing a home if they come into town, by taking care of them and all, you make it possible for them to do the job which God has called them to do. And so we become missionaries unattached from that standpoint. And that's what God would have us understand, that we are part of that, that we don't have to say, well, uh, you know, good luck. No, we're sending ourselves out, but in a different form. And, and well, I have a question on our missionary. Is it all the, the churches that contribute to this our missionary, or is it just our church? It's not all the churches, but it's it's the churches that... Uh, so it's just not our church. I forget where, where we're at. I forget what country we're in. But So it's just not our churches that is helping them. Is no. it? 
What it's missionary are you <clears throat> talking about? Well, we have a missionary from our church, but I don't know where they're at in what country. You mean Jane? 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 My dad? Rush, you mean? Beth, you mean? Yeah, probably. I'd have to look at that. Mm -hmm. They're in another country that I don't know where they're at. Korea. 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 That's right. So do we when we contribute, does it just go to uh, our church or do other Missouri synods give to them? I think we might be the only one that support him because he's not like a listed as a missionary. Well, yeah, no, he's a teacher. He he gets support through another uh, oh, okay. Yeah, he's not exactly a missionary. Oh, we 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 support through uh, uh, our giving to the Senate. Okay. Into the district, and especially through uh, hey, so what is it called? the um, yeah, Missouri Senate Committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 We, we tie us to here we stand. And part of that uh, is to uh, mission mission outreach like Franklin Avenue Mission. So it goes through that. Plus we support Franklin Avenue Mission independently. Also uh, Love Inc. So. So if we were to give to, I still call them missionaries because they're out there for us. Does it go someplace and then to them or does it go from our church directly to them? And it's taken out of the school. Well, yeah. for James, it, it the school, it, well, it, yeah. But like our our LWML, when he comes home, we always write him a check to help with his cost. Okay. Um, That's a and we and we also support our LWML sends a check directly to a SEM student if we have some woman sponsor. Because if you go through the Concordia, it'll go through their student loan, towards your student loan, and that doesn't help them. But man, if you're a college student, $100 a month means a world of difference to you. And then like at birthdays and Christmas, we spent, send them extra money. That's LWML. Yep. Our women's group. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other thoughts, questions, sir? Let's move on to number 120, John, uh, third John verses nine to 15, the last verses here. Verse nine, I have written something to the church, but Diophrathus, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing talking wicked nonsense against us and not content with that he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church beloved do not imitate evil but imitate good whoever does good is from god whoever does evil has not seen god demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself we also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends, every one of them. So in this section, John touches one particular obstinate person, I guess you'd say. The Afrifus is the opposite of Gaius because he refuses to welcome the brothers. But his problem was not only with love. How does John imply that the Afrifus has a problem with the truth as well? He's speaking of the fact that Jesus is is our savior or what truth is he lacking? The truth is, is that that he's talking about is that as a disciple of John, as as John is the disciple, as John has lived and walked with Jesus and learned from Jesus, 
doesn't even believe that. And that's what he's saying is the truth. I'm not, you know, I'm not talking to you about something else. I'm telling you the truth. This is what our Savior is and who he is. And yet Theophilus did not accept that message. He had his own verification. But this is definitely going to happen within the church. Well, it's the hubies to find another group to hang with because. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you see, and, and there, is, there is the case how do you love someone like that? Oh, it's that's hard. in the church, okay? How do you love someone like that? And that's what John is talking about. Okay. How, how, how would you love someone like that that just seems to be obstinate to the message? Well, if you don't have the Lord within you, you can't do it. Okay. At all. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know the word and have been taught, then you just can't do it. So then you have to remember in your head that God loves that person too. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be praying for them, praying for them. And, and working with them to open their heart because the devil wants to go with people that are in the church. He doesn't need to go to the bar that's on Saturday night to find evil. I mean, it does a much worse, he does a better job at dissension in the church to turning people away from that. That's where he's working at. Mm -hmm. That's where he's working at. But it's not easy. No, it's not. It's a challenge. It's, it's being the missionary again, isn't it? It's being a missionary to that person within the church body. It's proclaimed. It's going back to the basics as John did. Do you love the Lord? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? That's you have to start at some very basic fundamentals. You can't hit the problem so much as you have to get find out where that person is in life, you know. Prayer, 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 prayer. That's that's one of the biggest things that come along. It's amazing. This, this past week, I'm with family there. I have a son-in-law that pretty obstinate, very self-seeking, demanding person. And I've been kind of on him a little bit about church. I have to be careful because, you know, he's he immediately closes up and he immediately gets uh, in your defensive. face. Yeah, yeah defensive. in your face. So, you know, through through his, my daughter, they've started to go to church. This is the one that moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, okay. They started to go to church. And this, this last days ago was the first time I've seen him since they moved to Phoenix. And I tell you, what a difference his composure is and what he looks like. I mean, you can see it in his face. More relaxed than I've ever seen a person that has changed because he was always on edge because everything was a fight for him. And, uh, and, he, and he talks about the change that he's made. And I'm thinking, well, you got it partly right, but you didn't make the change. <laughs> God made the change. But, but, but I mean, my heart was just full of joy just to see. I did not believe it could happen or would happen. I really did. But to see. Power of prayer and the God's word. And when that too comes together, there's things that can change a person's life that we don't even expect or imagine to be able to do. So don't give up on praying. I'm just, you know, 
selling you and so you can tell them just do not give up praying for somebody who's not in the church who's not in the don't, don't give up god bless your daughter for not going with him you yeah. know not going to church yeah. and yeah you know so Thanks. it yeah. must have been her helping yes it was yeah yes. she had a desire to go but you know, she had a desire for a long time, but she knew if she just brought it up, he was, I don't need that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I take care of myself. He's, he's a guy who's, will tell you, he knows it all. <laughs> but he, but he's, le he's learned something. He has truly learned something that he didn't know before. Well, I have a grandson who's in computer things in college and he works at mobile t or something uh, up in where he goes in virginia and he loves this job but he said people don't understand me sometimes because he could just do all this in a set i said remember when a little old lady like me comes in and they want something new you have to start at the beginning and just build up you assume that they know this, they probably don't. If they shake their head, they do. They probably don't. So you got to go in the very beginning. And he says, you know, it works. It works. Yeah. He, he's a very good boy, man, or whatever. Boy, he's a man. I don't know. Why. He's always a boy, but he's a man to other people. Mm -hmm. But he, he just assumes that these little old ladies are pulled all out of control. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we shake our heads. But we don't understand a word they're saying. You gotta go from the very beginning. I just can't like phone to her daughter. <laughs> I, 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 I take care of this. I they're not understand. ever around that much. Yeah. yeah, I wish they could. Well, her daughter, I see. My own kids are going to go around to Texas and Jane is in the other Yeah, so it's, uh, I, I like to get in, but he's not here from college very much over the holidays. He's got, he's got this job and everything else. So, but he just said, it's true. You got to start from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and give it time. Give it time. It just doesn't change overnight. Last question, on one, number 122 on page 32, 53. How would you respond to someone who claims that the church should focus on acts of love and not worry so much about the truth? Ooh. Well, if you love somebody, you want them to know the truth because you don't want them to go into sin purposefully. They're connected, aren't they? They mm -hmm. are connected. Yeah. I mean, if they don't know the truth and they think anything they do that is living in sin is okay because God is love. Uh, and and really think about what they might be saying or thinking about in terms of that. How do you change the mind? That so many people, young people, are doing this. They see nothing wrong with it, but sometimes you wonder, maybe it isn't. I don't know. If if it's only about love and not truth. How would you even know what love is then? How how would how would a person know? How how could you trust somebody? You don't if they're not trusting in the truth, then how do you know what if my love is real? I'm just making it up just just to make you feel good. Is that the kind of love you want? It's not the truth. It's so connected. John connects truth and love. The truth of the Bible, the truth of God's word, the truth of love. Love as I have loved you. Tough love. Tough love. Special love. Uh -huh. Unconditional love. All of that. Yeah. Tough love is going to turn some away. Yeah, that's love. Yeah. That's love. That's love. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth that goes with it.
Right. Well, that that concludes our study of the books of first, second, and third John. Next year, when we come back after a couple of weeks off, we'll I think we'll go into the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. It's it's a, it's a, it's a study that takes us into the Jewish community. Gary, you today you're making the coffee since it's Hebrews. Hebrews, yeah, not Hebrews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will pray for you. <laughs> Our prayers have started. <laughs> we will pray for your faith. Carrie said it. I just repeated it. <laughs> oh, blaming now someone else. We'll pray for you. We'll <laughs> All right, well, that's that's good. for those on Zoom and for all of us, we say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, for you up here, we're going to go to the uh, sanctuary and uh, I'd like to lead you through a very short service and we'll close with your prayers. So feel free to open up from that standpoint, speak up so everyone can hear and uh, we'll just join in that type of a thing. And you at home may join us silently in your prayers and know that we'll be praying for you too. God bless. Bye. Bye. Have a good day, Ruth. What about Jill? Jill? Have a good day, Jill. <laughs> Have a good day, Pastor. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. God bless.